My name is Dr. Tom Yeager. I am a consultant in the Division of Primary Care Internal Medicine here at Mayo Rochester. Uh, I've been on staff here since 1989. And one of my duties here at, in Rochester is I'm medical director of uh, anticoagulation for employee community health. And um, what I want to talk about is um, some options for uh, using warfarin anticoagulation. Um, we've used warfarin as a blood thinner for decades, and it's really by far and away the most effective and um, it's really the standard of care in terms of, uh, of, of anticoagulation. However, it, it needs a lot of monitoring, and this has always been the challenge for patients on warfarin. There's always apprehension about uh, oh, am I going to have to get my blood tested, and and this is going to be burdensome. The reason, of course, for the for the blood testing that we do for patients taking warfarin is, well, if your blood is too thick, you might again have a clotting problem. If it's too thin, you may well have a bleeding problem. So we do also always need to keep the um, the blood thinning within the range that we uh, that we anticipate or that we desire. And so there are a number of options for patients that I'd like to kind of summarize. First off, the, the usual um, uh, process for monitoring the blood thinner uh, would be um, uh, to have a blood test called an INR or ProTime. Uh, the INR stands for International Normalized Ratio. There's a group of nurses that are dedicated. This is all they do. They just do anticoagulation monitoring. They're outstanding at what they do. They'll take a, a little blood sample. Uh, it's kind of like getting your blood tested if you're going to donate blood. It's very easy. I've had it done. They'll have a result on the INR within a minute or two. So right away we know what the, what the blood test result will be. Then they'll ask a number of questions about uh, a patient's health status. And then when, they, when they're done, they're actually given a written summary of, of what the dose of, of, of anticoagulant should be. And uh, the next appointment is then made. Now, um, how often is this done? Well, when a person first starts on warfarin, it, there's more testing uh, necessary, sometimes twice a week for the first week, then weekly for a few weeks. After the first month, it could be as, uh, uh, could go as long as four or five weeks even uh, if, the, if the dose and the test result are stable. But that still is a challenge for some patients. Um, so there's a number of options that I want to uh, kind of go through. One is just to have a standard blood draw. Um, we used to do this exclusively to have all the tests done by blood draw. Um, and the advantage there is, well, it's easy. You can do it at any, any lab, uh, certainly throughout the Mayo campus and even outside Mayo. Um, the results then can be communicated either by fax if you're outside Mayo or if you're within Mayo, uh, we can get the, the result. And that's uh, the way we've been operating for a long, long time with either a finger stick or a blood draw. But there's a number of newer options now that I think uh, patients would want to be aware of. Um, and uh, the one that I'm kind of most excited about, I guess, is the f uh, possibility that patients test their own blood uh, with a little meter. Uh, this would be very analogous to a diabetic testing their blood sugar. Um, and although there's a little bit to learn how to do it, um, in our experience it's, it's actually not hard. But the main advantage, of course, is that you don't have to go anywhere. You test yourself. And what we would normally uh, expect if a patient was going to be testing themselves, that you would do this test once a week and then communicate with us about once a month with how the tests are going. And if patients get that information on a weekly basis, they sort of intuitively uh, uh, do their own um, stabilization of their dietary uh, um, uh, patterns. And so we've actually found that patients that do elect to do their own testing, they do very well. They get uh, on a stable dose. So that's an option that we think more people uh, might want to consider. The other alternatives to the traditional warfarin anticoagulation that patients may want to consider uh, again, if the, the whole process of monitoring uh, is felt to be too cumbersome. Now there's two medications uh, that are available. They've just been released within the last couple of years where if you take the prescribed dose on a consistent basis, blood thinning effect is very consistent and um, there's essentially no testing required. And we would uh, expect that your blood would neither be too thin nor too thick, 
and you just keep taking your pill. Right at this point in time, the only indication for using the newer anticoagulants would be if you were taking uh, warfarin for atrial fibrillation. We do expect that, that the indication for the, the newer uh, uh, anticoagulants will expand. Why not everybody use these medicines? Well, uh, first off, because they're new, they're more expensive. Uh, upset stomach and nausea has been a reason some people have stopped newer, one of the newer anticoagulants. And there is a, a theoretical uh, issue um, or concern with the newer medications, and that is that if you did have a bleeding event, uh, there isn't any known antidote. If you're unlucky enough to have a bleeding episode, well, that can get a little bit dicey. Uh, this is always a concern for any blood thinner, and quite honestly, with the newer ones, we're still kind of learning how they work, and so there is a little bit of theoretical concern of what if uh, and can we control the bleeding satisfactorily uh, if it should occur. That's a little bit of an issue. Uh, for most people, it's not going to be um, um, a direct complication, but if one is kind of leery about uh, the worst case scenario, well then, you know, warfarin probably is going to be your best bet because we're very familiar with how that works.